I took my first bite of food and suddenly had searing, awful, electrical, lightning striking pain down my cheek and into my mouth. I was terrified about what would happen afterwards. Would I still be able to practice? Would I still be able to take care of my kids? Would I have facial paralysis? Would I have a stroke during surgery? I couldn't live with the pain anymore. Hello, this is Dr. Lee. Welcome back to Profiles in Patient Courage. Today I have a very unique story. This is a physician, a physician who chose me as her surgeon. But what was it very interesting is how she presented. She presented with classic trigeminal neuralgia, a facial pain disorder that can be so disabling and so, um, uh, so painful for patients. But what was interesting about her case is that she has a tumor which is causing her pain. I'm here with Dr. Chisek. Um, who presented with facial pain or trigeminal neuralgia. Now, I have a lot of patients with trigeminal neuralgia, but not everybody has a tumor. And so what's unique about her situation is that she had a tumor causing her pain, and she's gonna tell her story, Dr. Chisek. So I was completely fine until an anniversary dinner with my husband, where I took my first bite of food and suddenly had searing, awful, like electrical lightning striking pain down my cheek and into my mouth. And it happened over and over again. Um, I went to several different specialists and they all ruled me out for any other problems. And then I saw Dr. Lee and we ordered an MRI and I had a two and a half centimeter tumor that was causing it. Yeah. So. Um Dr. Chisek's tumor is a meningioma, which is very common in women. Uh, fortunately, she's a physician herself. Um, well, first I had medicines that actually helped my pain. So at first he told me I didn't need surgery, which I was very grateful for. Um, but he told me the signs to look for if I would need surgery in the future. And unfortunately, a few months later, those signs showed. And so I was scared. I was terrified about what would happen afterwards. Would I still be able to practice? Would I still be able to take care of my kids? Would I have facial paralysis? Would I have a stroke during surgery? I mean, I, I read about it and knew a lot of the risks and those were very scary just for my career and for my family. Um, but towards the end, honestly, my pain got so horribly severe that I came into his office begging for it because I couldn't live with the pain anymore. So by the end, I was just ready for it to hopefully be over. What was um, challenging is the location. The location is in the cerebellopontine angle. It's deep. It goes down uh, adjacent to the hearing nerve, the trigeminal nerve, of course, which is what's causing the pain. But also there's a risk for facial paralysis from the surgery. And um, that raises the risks of the surgery. But fortunately, um, I do this surgery quite often for acoustic neuromas and, of course, for idiopathic trigeminal neuralgia. On this channel, Profiles in Patient Courage, you're going to hear a lot about the skull base, especially the cerebellopontine angle. Because in this location, I do a lot of surgery. I operate on patients with trigeminal neuralgia, like Dr. Chisek. I operate on patients with acoustic neuromas. And the anatomy in this location is beautiful. And in many of the subsequent videos, I'm going to be able to show you this incredible, beautiful anatomy. For example, in this case, you can see a CP angle meningioma. I'm teasing it gently and dissecting it off the cerebellum. I've already cauterized the base. I'm peeling it off the eighth cranial nerve. Now, this is not Dr. Chisek's surgery, but it does give you an example of the beautiful anatomy. And in this case, I'm actually doing it with the endoscope and not the microscope. How was your recovery? It was a while ago, but yeah. So it was six years ago and I went in terrified and um, I went better than any of us ever could have expected. And I had, I had lost a ton of weight because one of the triggers for the pain was chewing. And so I was perpetually hungry and hangry for like a month before the surgery. And so I have vivid memories of waking up the next morning with my breakfast and a plate full of bacon, and I had never been so happy to eat and not have any pain whatsoever. It was like a light switch. I woke up and 
I could make any facial expressions, I could eat, I could laugh, I could cry, and I had zero pain. And it, it truly was like a light switch. That's, um, that's always the best with a patient's pain, where it, right away that evening they can tell they're better. Um, it, it doesn't always happen, but when it does happen, it's very memorable for, for patients. Um, and um, describe your life now. What do you look forward to? Oh my gosh. It, I mean, it's, it's I, I will never, you know, I'm a physician and when people say they have 10 out of 10 pain, I know what that's like and I am grateful for being able to make any expression and laugh and cry and not worry that that awful pain is going to come back. And I really, I kind of like don't sweat the small stuff and nothing really bothers me because I feel like once you've had a craniotomy, um, I don't know, it, it, it takes a lot to rattle me now. So it was beneficial in every way and every part of my life, so. Yeah, that's great. And now her six year MRI looks clean. So we'll get one at uh, 10 years. And um, because she has a slow growing benign tumor, we watch, but we don't have to watch so closely. Well, we're gonna skip four years here. So very good. Yeah, I'll take it.